All right, welcome back. Make some noise. Uh. <laughs> Say my wabebe. Wabebe. Ati wabebe. Mani wabebe. Wabebe. No, ate. We got another fun guy show. I put out. Ah, okay, but that's an alley, baby. Wabebe. Okay, that's an alley, baby. Wabebe. I'm Zuna. What what are you saying? Anyway, it's all good. Let's see. Welcome back. The hashtag to use as always is Wabebe XP. Now, my next guest is not a stranger to controversy, but he has quite a track record. He has won several elections, and he'll tell us some of the secrets why he has had highs and lows, and he is currently. The president's digital and creative advisor and CAS ICT nominee. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for Dennis Itumbi! <laughs> yes. Karibu sana. Thank Karibu you, sana. sir. Make some noise one more time. Hey. Ati tutu wa bebe. Wa bebe. Wa bebe. Wa bebe. Hapo sawa. Unajua pia Dennis you also go by Mr. Come here go there. Oh yeah. Oh yes. yeah. And this is come here. This is come here. I'll be going there after this. Hapo <laughs> sawa. Karibu sana. Thank you, sir. Karibu sana. You know uh, for, you know like I said in the in the end today has been First of all, on the digital streets, uh, you have you always cause quite a stir. One tweet can uh, get everything going, <laughs> but that is the now. We want to take it way back to what they say the beginning. Yes. Yeah. What, what was it like? What, what what schools did you go to? How did you grow up? What was the come up like? I grew up in the village. Went to village schools. Mm -hmm. I came to ca to town as an adult, coming to college. Um, I remember when I arrived at Tea Room <laughs> at the time, I had two options. So I had been given a thousand bob from home. Uh, mm -hmm. we, st we stay in Kirinyaga and I was coming to South, South B mm -hmm. to Kenya Institute of Mass Communication. So when I got to our tea room, I needed to find where my school was, mm -hmm. where college was. So first, because I had gone to school, I tried to draw a compass. Yes. <laughs> but uh, my South Beat went straight into a building. Yes. So it was a dead end. Yes. So I used to what you used to do for cows, put some saliva on the hand. <laughs> Hit it, <laughs> and then it showed me the way. It was all the way to Uhuru Park, Gong, <laughs> Gong Road Avenue 2. Yes. I got lost. And mm -hmm. then uh, at that point, my mom had given me some instructions that don't ask anyone for directions mm -hmm. except one, a policeman in uniform, mm -hmm. a watchman in uniform, mm -hmm. or a woman who is pregnant. Mm -hmm. So, Mamba Nilikoma mm Tatu. -hmm. Mamba Nilikoma Tatu. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, as uh, Fale, I did not have any of those three people from where I was. There was nobody who was pregnant. There yes. was no policeman. And there, there was, was no watchman. Yes. So I then decided to do what was more obvious. I listened to what those bus conductors were saying and I couldn't understand. Mm -hmm. So I opted for the easier option. Mm -hmm. There were no Ubers at the time. So I, the easy option was to get into a cab. Mm -hmm. Remember I had a thousand shillings. I'd already paid 250 as my transport to yes. Nairobi. And I uh, now paid 200 shillings for my cab to South B. Mm -hmm. It was a Friday. So when I got to college, mm -hmm. it was already five and government offices closed. Right. So I had to negotiate my way with those uh, watchmen at the gate there to give me accommodation in that place. That's where I spent my first weekend in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's how I got into Nairobi and started So life. the accommodation you spent, hapo kwa watchman? Kabisa. Uli, uli I, India, I, I, I bought bus, nani kawanulia, that weekend I kept them fed yeah. with loaf and, uh, and soda, with yes. the little money that now was remaining. Mm -hmm. But after that, my life in Nairobi began. So mm -hmm. it began as a hustle. Yes. It has been a good hustle. Yes. I must say I am not complaining. Mm -hmm. And, and every, every time that, um, you know, you've, you've been out in the digital streets now, right? And now you, have, you, you made a living from online, and now you're advising on digital matters. How did that journey start, your love for the digital space? So I started as a journalist, by the way. Okay. Um, I have worked for the People Daily. I've worked for Citizen TV when yes. they were in our bank house, by the way. Mm -hmm. I've worked for Standard Newspapers. Mm -hmm. I've worked for, after that, I moved out a bit mm -hmm. and started my own newspapers called The mm -hmm. Kenyan. 
after which I stopped and uh, got into Baraka FM as a Nairobi mm. person. And then I got to the Voice of America as a Nairobi correspondent. And then I got bored. It was right. the same thing every day, write a story here, go stay outside for a while. I got bored. So I went online. In fact, I remember my first blog was called abunwasi.com. Mm -hmm. So I then got, I loved the digital space. And at the time is when Facebook was getting in. Then mm. Twitter came, Instagram right. came, and now it's TikTok. Yes, and threads. And threads. Yes. So, but the principle is the same for right. everyone who is watching, that the principle of digital media is the same. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's how I got into the digital media. First, I got as a user. Then after that, I have now developed it into a business. So I have a business arm of the digital thing, and I also have a user bit. Okay. So yes, um, the love was grown over time. Now where <laughs> it got its shoot was uh, 2010. <laughs> I get this call, um, and uh, this is a story I've told several times, but this call I get, and this guy says I am Uhuru Kenyatta, and I say I'm the king of England. <laughs> then he says, uh, I'm you actually, it's a joke. yeah, I thought it's a joke. Right. Then immediately he says, we need to meet. And we met and uh, he said he wanted me to help him become president. So I laughed mm -hmm. actually because mm -hmm. I thought, how do I make this guy president? I can't make myself MCA. Right. But uh, well, as I say, the rest, uh, after that he was named into the ICC process mm -hmm. where I'm always accused of hacking ICC computers. Right. I always say I never hacked any computers. I just visited uh, a, a room where computers are and we had a conversation with the computers and with that that case collapsed <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so now when you when you you know it's it's one thing that you start you you're told okay i want you to help me and then you come in you are what people would perceive at that time a new player people don't know even about this thing called digital so how do you navigate those those waters because that's a, you you are telling him to do things and you know how actually, do you navigate those waters? Actually, let me first start that story somewhere around. So we get in and we start this digital thing. First, government had not did not even have a Facebook page, right. so we put up all those basic digital presence for government. Right. Around 2016, Facebook starts the live button. Mm -hmm. So I remember going live with my phone because then we didn't even know how to go live using a, a professional camera. Right. So I remember going in state house live in an event where President Uhuru Kenyatta was. Mm -hmm. I remember one security person, despite my senior position in the in state house at that time, mm -hmm. coming to stop me from taking it and after that function, mm -hmm. reporting me to the president. And the president calls and says, mm -hmm. what is that thing I'm told you're doing that you're going live? What, uh, What's what, that? Uh, these guys are saying it's a security threat. Right. So I explained to the president this is a feature and this is actually what is going to be used in the 2017 election campaigns. Mm -hmm. So we are now just testing it. So just allow us to test. And then he said, is it going, to, his only question was, is it going to benefit us? And mm -hmm. I said, yes, of course. I don't know how as of now, because it's still a new tool. We will have to use it and know. And I, I remember after he gave the green light, the security team uh, said I was actually called me for a meeting. We spent almost two hours <laughs> teaching them even something I was myself also <laughs> learning. So the digital thing is, has had is uh, handicaps, even at the very top level. Right. Right. So now, as, you, as you're there, of course, the friendship, well, I don't know, you can we safely call it a friendship, uh, it continued. And then at one point, you took a part of the announcement, boom. You come back in a tumbi, you have a color kakidu, booted out of, what happened? What happened? Because at one point, everybody was there, then there was some, a raft of changes that were announced. And that now, uh, Dennis Itumbi is no longer there, and then of course, people started trending, saying, ah, siku yake sasa mefika, sasa metolewa. What happened? What, what went down? So yes, it's true, it was a friendship. Right. A Nairobi governor, Johnson Sakaja, myself and a team of other young guys were friends with Uhuru Kenyatta. We chilled out in a place, we had an office uh, near Breban, the Breban that's just borders uh, Kawangware. Right. So there was an office there, so which, uh, w where we spent the campaign for three, four years. In 2012, I was arrested because of campaigning for, uh, campaigning for Uhuru Kenyatta, and then I was accused of having hacked the computers at the ICC. Right. As I said, my defense was simply that I visited the computers and we had a conversation and they were unable to go on with the case. Right. I basically won the case. Mm -hmm. um, so we were friends. I mean, by the time he became president, we were friends. I mm -hmm. mean, remember one time after he won, we had not moved into government. We were still in the campaign office. Mm -hmm. And he called and said, you guys uh, made sure I campaigned, I became president, and then you ran away for me to handle things alone. Yeah. You guys must come in. We were friends, we were having banter. We were hanging out, we were exchanging stuff, and many other things that we write in our books. Right. So we were friends. I mean, I, by I know they're using the past tense. 
yeah, 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 yeah. It is uh, <laughs> very intentional. Right. So one day I'm leaving a barrio, mm -hmm. and I'm somewhere near where I get a call. It's around, uh, it's around uh, 2, 3 p.m. Mm -hmm. Hello, Dennis. Of course, he's the president. Uh, naturally, at the time, remember we were in our late 20s, so we were very excited about being in State House and all this business. So uh, when the president calls, there's a natural urge, because I remember I was driving myself, there's a natural urge to park mm -hmm. and first talk to the president. I mean, you, if you're in a position, you're not able to continue driving when he's calling. I'm sure with Wabebe, one of these days you get a call from a president yes. and there's a feeling that comes with it initially when you're not used to it. Mm -hmm. So I packed and uh, he told me, uh, why are you not supporting me? Mm -hmm. I was taken aback. I told him, Mr. President, this is now 2018, 2019. Tell him, my friend, mm -hmm. I support you. I support the big four, which was his flagship then. Mm -hmm. He said, no, it's not the big four. Why are you not supporting me? Why are you supporting William Ruto? Right. I was a bit confused. I said, uh, is there a problem of supporting William Ruto? I thought he's still your deputy. Mm -hmm. Then he said, you have to stop going to Karen and you have to stop going to the office at Harambe Annex, which is opposite office of the president. Mm -hmm. I was a bit, I, I got more confused with this conversation because there was no background on the conversation. So I told him, uh, Mr. President, I think uh, I'm, I'm not clear what uh, we are discussing. Right. He said, hold that phone and don't disconnect. So remember, I'm packed. I'm in Moya, I'm packed. Right. I s took like 10 minutes and I decided, let me drive. If he continues, I put the phone on our speaker. If he speaks, then I will speak the call. I drove. I kid you not, he did not disconnect the call. He spoke again when I was in Pangani. Oh. From where? Me, from where? Mm -hmm. Then he told me, now my friend, I am going to crush you. Mm -hmm. What? I am going to crush you. If you continue supporting William Ruto, I'm going to finish so you. So when you, wait. I'm going to crush you. This is a president. Tell him, you know, you yes, see, yes, Baba yes. Tini Zappa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going, yeah, I'm going to crush you. Yes, I'm going to crush you. I'm going to finish you. Mm. I was like, what's the problem? Is, what exactly is the problem? How, how did that make you? First of all, how did that make Will he stop ten up and go on the The two? conversation at Mwea and the conversation at, at Pangani, Pangani was a clear indication that the tone and demeanor and the state of the person speaking on the other side was not the same. Mm. Uh, I leave that to your interpretation. Right. So when he started on the phone, I am going to crush you, it felt, it felt like, you know, these are president men. Yes. And you see, at the time, I had uh, declined my, I, I was in a position in state house where I qualified for a driver and, and I qualified for security. Right. I had resisted because I wanted to keep my life. I, want, I didn't want someone hanging out with me. I'm out there um, trying to chase a girl and there's <laughs> some guy there always <laughs> overlooking me. So I resisted yes. the offer from the president at the time and from the security machinery. And I also felt I had no enemies. Mm. But here is now a president saying, I'm going to crush you. I'm going to finish you. In succession, those two words were uttered. Mm. So I told him, I think, Mr. President, as from where I sit, I cannot go back on my word on supporting William Ruto. Mm -hmm. So he repeated the words again. This time now, I've cruised past Ngara and that stuff. I remember walking directly into the then deputy president's office and told him what's happening between you and your boss. And he told me there is nothing. We are okay. Mm. It's you guys who are spreading rumors around. My here. friend, Tuko Sao. Yeah, Tuko Sao, Kabisa. <laughs> it is you guys spreading rumors here. There is nothing. Yes. And indeed, even said they had actually spoken uh, with him, mm -hmm. with uh, with his boss. Then, of course, after a few months, it was now clear that there's a divide. There's a, a divide, even for him. Yes. He started thinking that there was clearly a divide. I, I I know the next question would be what really happened. Right. I have no idea. I think the problem, however, must be my friend Uru Kenyatta, because Gashagwa was his PA. Right. They, they are not in talking terms. Kimani Shungwa, I saw him on an interview with a former colleague of yours called Enoch Sikoria the other day yes. saying, look, the guy called me and I blocked him. Mm -hmm. um, when you look at Dindi Nyoro, mm -hmm. who was blasted at, K at Kasarani simply because he said he had done something, he asked for some support for a school he was doing. Mm -hmm. If you look at everybody who was Uhuru's friend is no longer a friend. Even forget the campaigns. Mm -hmm. The people who supported him for the 2022 campaigns, including Sabina Chege, mm -hmm. Kanini Kega, mm -hmm. are no longer with him. Mm -hmm. Surely. The problem cannot be us. Yes. It must be him. So are you in talking terms with him, you yourself? Like if you call him today? I, I, I think the person who stopped communicating was Uhuru Kenyatta. And since he was the president, I am just a guy who 
is in this town trying to make a living. Right. It is up to him to, if he ever feels that he should ever give a call, it's up to him. I, I unlike Kimani Ishungo, have not blocked him. Right. If he called, I will pick up his call. But I am not desperate for his call. The only thing that I will never do, and it is what I told him at the time when he called, is kneel down before a fellow man. I, I don't need Uhuru Kenyatta. I d the right word is I don't give a damn whether he calls me or not. <laughs> he's, a, he's, a, he's a kind of a guy who, who I thought when we supported him had a vision for... I mean, at one time he was telling me how much would it take to turn the life of a Kenyan in the rural area. Right, right. He had the right dreams, the right projection. We would be talking about his legacy today. Mm. But he chose the other way. Mm -hmm. He chose the other way of fighting everyone around him for absolutely no reason. Like, for instance, why would he fight Denis Itumbi? I mean, right. I, have, I don't have his wealth. I don't have his position. I don't have his kind of names and plexi he has across mm -hmm. the country. I am, I, I am a small person in mm -hmm. the view of what he's managed to build mm -hmm. for himself and what has been built for him. Mm -hmm. But time has shown us that the Uhuru Kenyatta we supported and the Uhuru Kenyatta who left the presidency of one year ago are two different people. Is it, is it people around him, do you think? Is it because, you, you, is it, you know, sometimes you are... The, uh, the, yeah, the, pre I, I, the quote unquote president's man. I, I actually have felt that from, I've, I've, from the time I started understanding politics, I've always had that. You know, when you want to excuse the president, we say the president is not bad, ni it's the people who want to work uh, So I wouldn't blame anyone around him. It is directly on his feet. Okay. A president is a president because he is able to make decisions mm -hmm. and he is able to chart a path mm -hmm. for everyone and for the country. If he can't chat a path around the people surrounding him and he can't make decisions, then he doesn't deserve the position. Right. So I do not blame anyone around him. Right. It is rests on his feet. Okay. It didn't stop there, by the way. Mm -hmm. So he, he does that. Then 2019, on my birthday, I, I, I learn I've, I've been fired. I was actually having dinner. I learned I've been fired, which mm -hmm. is okay because I expected it. In any case, at that time, I was already ready to take the next course. Mm -hmm. And I was already decided we were going to support William Ruto. And I was convinced it was a, I was convinced we were going to beat Uhuru Kenyatta and his people because we knew what we did for them to win. It was easy to undo that. Right. Then 2019, I get arrested. I was at uh, then, now it's pronto. I don't know what it was called at the time. Mm -hmm. But I was uh, having my lunch there with a colleague of mine called Emmanuel Talam. Yes. These guys come in. They say, we are DCI. And my guy, you're under arrest. I don't understand why DCI deploys 40 policemen to arrest a guy who doesn't even own a gun. Right. So I'm arrested by almost 40 guys and outside there, there are about four Subarus and they make a scene rushing all over. Then they take me to DCI headquarters. So they give me three charges. One, I have forged a letter by a cabinet secretary. Second one, I have distributed the letter. And the third one, which is the most interesting, reprogramming a phone. Now, mm. so I, I, I was really interested to know what is reprogramming a phone. Mm -hmm. So in the details, they say I deleted some messages I'm on my phone. Sim. <laughs> and why do I have a delete button on my phone if I'm not allowed to delete? How can that right. be a crime? Anyway, mm -hmm. they went to court and I bet them again and I'm now in court asking for money and I will win that money. Mm -hmm. As usual, you know, they do some silly cases. We go to court, we beat them and we make money, which is a good thing. They can continue arresting us, we will continue making, making money. money. Yeah, it's no problem. Yes. So anyway, mm -hmm. so after the arrest and uh, the courts were in, he, he then now, to around 2021 December, I'm preparing to go for Christmas. Mom calls me. They wanted some money at home to prepare for Christmas. So I leave the house. First, I go into Akinyozi. I wanted, my intention was to send her some money to do some shopping. Mm -hmm. So I go into Akinyozi. As I'm leaving the Akinyozi, these three guys approach me and tell me they're policemen. So Nikon mm -hmm. So it didn't matter. So I said, okay, so why are you taking me? But then I noticed in their demeanor, they were not actually policemen mm. because of the way they handled the first few moments. So I decided to shout so that the guys who were shaving me and the guys on a car wash opposite could hear. Because mm. I, I, I just told them, just to go any picture Igari, na mweke, Facebook, na Twitter. Because mm. I knew it would spread out very fast. Right. So anyway, I get into the car, they blindfold me, they chain my hands and my legs, then they start beating me. They had hammers, they had these uh, nails. They start beating me. Those guys can actually on working on someone and beating someone, those guys know their job. Mm. They beat me, Banambaka. I, I just couldn't coordinate. Then now they started a narrative. Because by then, I think Facebook and social media had gone wild. Right. They started a narrative that I have a, a, I have a satellite inside my body that is communicating with the outside world. So they strip me naked. Then they start now making incisions with an attempt to remove this alleged satellite. satellite. 
at this time I knew I was going to die. I mean, even the conversation in that car were more like, when will you stop supporting William Ruto? You must, support, you must tell us you're going to stop supporting William Ruto and you must go on your Facebook. Then they realize I have my phones. Mm. So they try to fungua the phones, they can't. So they tell me to fungua. I tell them you have to undo my blindfold because I Plus use... ID. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So mm. that I, uh, I... Of course now they don't want to un unfold me because I'll see them. So what do they do? They throw out the phones. Mm. So they continue. It's around uh, three-ish into the night. I can see we are in traffic because I can hear people bragging. I can hear these guys saying that traffic in mob sana, but I don't know where I am. Mm -hmm. So they con at one point they stop somewhere and now they bring another. They tell me they are handing over me to another team. So I'm taken by these other guys. They take me to a higher car because I can feel this was a lower car. Now I'm this one to get in. I can see I'm climbing somewhere. They beat me seriously. Uh, at one point I pass out. So the next time. I wake up, I am in this car squeezed by three people, then there are some guys and I can hear the radio saying, that guy, you must take him out. You must throw him, you must get him out of that car and you guys escape. It is, it, it, out here is too hot, you must get him out. And uh, so one guy says, we can't let him out in the condition he is, mm. we need to kill him. What? Then this other guy says, no, I can't be part of a... Um, so these are people negotiating about your life as you're there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Why yeah, yeah. At that moment, were you praying? Were you... What was going on? What was going through your mind? Like, were you... I had, I had accepted death. So I was imagining what uh, people will say in my barrio. What mm. probably you come and say right. my barrio. I had given up at that point. I said, let it be. I've done my bit. Life goes on. But I was clear to them that even if you killed Dennis Etumbi, there will be many other Dennis Etumbis. And I will not die a coward, having abandoned my cause and my belief, because I believe that principles are firm and visions are best when, you know, Paul wrote somewhere in a letter in the Bible that, you know, my eyes are on the prize. Mm. I am focused. I am running my race. And eventually he said, I have finished the race. Mm. I felt in 2022, August, that I had actually finished the race of the farm focus that I had. Mm -hmm. But anyway, they dropped me out at Kasarani, which I knew was Kasarani later. Mm -hmm. I, I, I crawl and walk a mixture of it towards a roundabout, where one of the guys, remember I'm completely naked, right. where one of the guys actually recognizes me, stops and says, Dennis, I've seen you, I've seen these things on Twitter. Hey man, what can I do? But he's also very afraid that we are being followed by some unknown guys. Right. But I tell him, we go. Now I see people making a lot of fun because the first thing I told that guy, Mimi Nataka Fanta. Because I was, I, I needed some energy. Mm. So this was a very good guy, Makoha. He took me to his uh, place. He got me a, a, a shawl, I think a bed cover or something. Then he bought me a Fanta. Then he asked me, which hospital do I take him to? I told him I can't choose a hospital. Take me to the nearest one. So he took me to Neema Hospital, which is, I came to run later, is next to Kasarani Stadium. Mm -hmm. Then from there, I transferred to Nairobi West Hospital, where I stayed for a few months. And I spent four, five months healing. They beat me everywhere with the hope that I had they had destroyed me everywhere. But as I speak to you today, because there is a God in heaven, I am healed everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the, the strategy of the kidnap failed. Mm. And then after that, it was now passion multiplied. I campaigned like I have never campaigned before. Right. I went to places I've never been to. I redid our strategies. We delivered the presidency which is now President William Ruto. And President William Ruto came to see me in hospital and we had a chat. And he also couldn't believe that our politics had gotten to the point where if you disagree with ideas, you go physical. Right. And they didn't send me one man. Well, if they had sent me one man, I would have fought a bit. Right. Send me over these first four men and then the others who they handed me over another four. Mm -hmm. Then me eight men, there's no way I was going to fight. Right. But we won the battle. Yes. They won the fight, we won the battle. Right. Now, I mean, first of all, well, I guess we can say we are glad you are here. Uh, yeah. Because of it's unfortunate that uh, policies would get that that area. Uh, there are some people here who have a question uh, about twins. Will help. I don't know where the microphone is. It's okay. We'll we'll we'll, we'll organize that uh, yeah. for them to come. But also now, when it comes to you know the dressing, we've seen Sikwizu Nangara Kaunda, President Nangara Kaunda. <laughs> but most people always notice your bracelet. What's the story about the bracelets? <laughs> <laughs> because Aukwangi <laughs> na. <laughs> the same. <laughs> so, yes. This particular one is actually a new addition. There's okay. a guy called Martin. Yes. Of Digital Vision. Mm -hmm. I think he went to Nigeria, South Africa, and someone mm -hmm. handed over. So one time he came to me and he was trying to tell me the principles of uh, creative economy. Right. At the end, I told him, uh, oh, I didn't, I don't, I didn't wear my other bracelets. I yes. told him, okay, 
I have another one you have to exchange with this one because I felt mm. this was really African. So there's no, it's just like I love, uh, I love braces. I used to do a Kenyan one, that uh, the strip of the Kenyan one. Yes. Um, I wore it for a long time, but mm -hmm. uh, over time I think I've now liked the removables more than the permanent ones. Mm -hmm. So there's uh, nothing much. As for the Kaunda suits, yes. Because I to hate... I, 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 mean, I need to ask the president why he does Kaunda suit because the... Yes. Uh, the rest of us went to Kaunda suit because we hate suits. Like me, I, I hate mm. suits and ties. Mm -hmm. Anything that can free from me from that and I still remain formal. I, with this, I can go to, a, to an official event. I can go to an informal event. Yes. So I hate suits with a passion. Yes. So for me, Kaunda suit was just an option to move away from suits. Mm. So yes, that's how I got into Kaunda suits. Okay. And of course, we, we have tailors that are completely different. The mm. president has... Uh, or uh, as a as a tailor who is doing his stuff, mm -hmm. and I have my tailor Waim Tatu, <laughs> so to go completely different. But for the pop, for the reasons, I cannot mm -hmm. speak for him. But for me, I wore because I hate suits mm -hmm. with a passion and with all my heart. Uh, African African wear must be seen as formal mm. in our circles. We must look for a way that you can even go to office in some smart casual. Who mm -hmm. says that if you go to office with a suit is when you do? better participation. People should judge our minds, not what we dress with. Right. I hope one day we'll get there where I can yes. be able to comfortably walk into an office in mm -hmm. my jeans and my shirt and be able still to contribute in a meeting. Yes. We've uh, so resolved this Western idea of suits for too long. It's time we interfere with that process. And uh, you can almost see that <coughs> it is almost there. Yes, what did you your jeans? <laughs> Okay, yes. well, you can. I guess you can ask a question and then I'll relay because I don't know. We don't think probably have the show. What's your question? Because so you have a microphone. Yes. Hi. Hello. Uh, I'm Chelsea Lacey and I have a question. So, how do you win elections? <laughs> what do you do? What do you do? Yes, to Chelsea win Lacey, how do you win elections? You said, ni, I think three now, right? Yeah. Yes, three. Like, how do you win elections? What's the strategy? I know there's a book called How to Win Elections <laughs> in Africa, but how does Dennis Dimi do it? <laughs> so it's, I've been first fortunate to be in uh, national elections that we have won. But bef before that, I was also in student elections. I lost one, I won two. And even after that, I've done elections outside Kenya, uh, which countries I won't mention for now, because now I'm in government, will create a diplomatic issue. Mm -hmm. But even those ones we won. So how do you win elections? Research commitment and a plan mm. when you vie for women rep where do you come from which county Kakamega. vie for women rep i'll <laughs> offer my free services for you and you will win <laughs> <laughs> right. and then also of course we've had a lot of uh, suggestions because you are in the digital and the creative space we've had things about banning tiktok um then we also have everybody is looking for monetization. How do we make money online? Now more than to kiyanda kutengene da pesa, sasa taxman ana kujata iyo, ana taka sasa kutufinile apu. Jaman, yes. Okay, so let's start with TikTok. Yes. From around 12 midnight, from midnight up to around 3, 4 a.m., TikTok is a crime scene in this country. The live videos are purely porn. Mm -hmm. But with an audience. Obviously, with an audience. Yes, okay. so because it's important that there is somebody on the other side. Yes, 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 yes. yes, yes tr right. Watching the porn. Right. That person on the other side will not be there without the content creator of porn. Okay. So the person Fair to deal point. with mm -hmm. is the person who is doing the basically what is a moral crime scene. I am not an, a big advocate of uh, government controlling morality. Right. However, I'm a big advocate of clean content. So our conversation with TikTok first, the president met them through a virtual link right. with the CEO, global CEO, and the African uh, head, mm -hmm. Fortune Shibanda. Fortune. Yes. And uh, they, were, they have been here for a week. They actually left today, no, yesterday. Mm -hmm. I, I am going to South Africa. I'll be meeting them uh, around the third week of this month. Wow. We think there is a way to start moderating a content moderation plan for TikTok. Mm -hmm. Facebook has it, Twitter has it, Instagram has it. Mm -hmm. TikTok must have it for mm -hmm. this market. Mm -hmm. So therefore, I mean, I've just been in this, uh, in this great place of yours uh, today, right. Willis, and I've seen, and even in your audience, I've seen young creative minds 
with serious content. Surely we can't be discussing about 1% of the content mm -hmm. on TikTok. So I think with TikTok, they agreed we will get into a content moderation plan. The first thing, withdraw monetization on anyone doing porn. Mm. Because then if there is no monetization, the motivation of doing porn disappears. Two, anyone doing porn through the tools that TikTok has, give them a suspension or remove them all together from the platform. Right. That way, that platform starts becoming a clean platform for our youth and even for us who are content consumers. Mm. I do not think anyone is going to... I, in fact, I can tell you with authority, we are not going to ban TikTok. We have better things to do. Yeah. We have uh, this country... I mean, peop when people are earning money, we can't stop the platform for them to earn money. Right. We can stop them from doing the bad things to get money, just like we stop thieves from getting money by stealing from a bank. Right. So that we can do. But we need to improve. In fact, we have agreed with TikTok to roll out a national training program mm -hmm. so that people, because that the monetization here is at 100% for TikTok. In fact, it's the only platform with 100% monetization. Mm -hmm. But uh, our audience only uses almost 60 to 70%. So to be able to benefit from the 100% of TikTok monetization, we need a training so that people can understand. Mm -hmm. So we've agreed on our, uh, and they're going to be here in December for the week of Jamuhuri Day. Right. And uh, they're going to be rolling out a national TikTok master class okay. for the entire country. Mm -hmm. So I think we are good with TikTok and we are going towards there. Right. I am, however, I know there is a petition in parliament by a gentleman called Bob Dolo, mm -hmm. who I know too well. He, the process will continue. Parliament will make his decisions. Mm -hmm. And I urge your audience and TikTok users to make sure their memorandum and voices are heard in parliament. Mm -hmm. I will also look for an opportunity to appear there. I have very strong views about it. So I, uh, but from a government perspective, we are not banning TikTok. Right. The second issue is on monetization and how to make money. Mm -hmm. Since the president got in into power in December last year, we negotiated with Facebook that is not doing monetization. We've pushed them too hard that in April this year they have picked 25 creatives on a, o, o, on a pilot program for monetization. So finally on Facebook, after a very long fight, we are almost there on monetization. And remember, Facebook is the biggest platform in the world and the biggest in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Almost six times what uh, Twitter is mm -hmm. and four times what Instagram is in terms of size. So if you monetize Facebook, people will see incomes bigger than what they are seeing right now. So we are almost there with Facebook and Instagram. Right. WhatsApp has started WhatsApp channels. They are already on pilot. Mm -hmm. They should be through in a few. So there is also money coming there. Then... Now TikTok, which we are doing what we must yeah, do. Yeah. And what's the government doing so that they can make money from this digital training? Platforms. Yes. And pushing those training platforms push to the increase. Platform. Okay. Then also importantly, 10% of government advertising, the right. president has already declared, right. should go to these digital platforms. Because you see like YouTube, you will only make money up to some point because of how, gov of how Kenya advertises on those platforms. Mm -hmm. So by increasing government advertising, you're increasing the share for content creators to make money there. Mm -hmm. Digital tax. If you earn an income, you must pay tax. At uh, yes, to give you give yes, give to Zakai. Yeah, what belongs <laughs> to Caesar? Na Zakai atu na shida. Bora tu yes, wa kifika seme tu shuke kumuti tu kule lunch tu kusawa. Tu kusawa. Tu kusawa. Okay. So digital yes. tax. If you earn, you must earn. What? What was wrong was 15% withholding tax because right. if you are an engineer, a journalist, a lawyer, if you work with government. Withholding tax is 5%. Why should it be different for content creators? Right. When we put the case to the president, he listened and agreed with us to bring, and parliament also agreed, to bring down to 5%. 5% of what? Right. There's a digital content tax of 1.5% of the income that you get. Okay. This withholding tax is not money that goes to government. It's, mo it's money that you hold until your income is in, mm. so that it's, self it's deductible from your income. Okay. So this 1.5%, by the way, the OECD countries were here in March, and we promise to remove it if they agree. Mm -hmm. Because you see, UK has a digital tax, India has a digital tax, Italy has a digital tax, Australia has a digital tax. But we need an agreement on how much is that digital tax. Okay. And is it double? I mean, if you're in UK, you're a Kenyan, and you make money, if we tax it here and you tax it in the UK, is it double taxation? Mm -hmm. So those are some of the issues on these platforms you're working on. Like in Yushuru Tulipe. Okay, Tulipe. All right, and finally, of course, there are people who are 
starting out in this Kenya, like you said, there is, uh, when you address people, you're addressing different people. There are those who are starting out. There is a Dennis Itumbi somewhere or, uh, who has just got into Nairobi last week. Amata Indo Wiki Yake Kwanza. Uh, who probably also was given some money and they are starting out. There is a hustle out there who wants to make their business better. There is somebody who wants to go to a digital, wants to make money on the digital platforms. What, what advice would you give to a young person in Kenya who is starting out and who is also in just his, ako easy to call easy streets and hustle? Yeah. Well, just before I answer that, let me address two gentlemen. Yes. One is called uh, Fred Okengo Matiang. Yes. And another one is called uh, Kibicho. Yes. I forgive you guys. Keeping bitterness within ourselves mm -hmm. about what you did will be wrong. Mm. But the fact that we forgive you does not mean you will not account for the other things that you did. Mm -hmm. So we'll meet on the other things you did. We'll meet Ukombele somewhere. Yes. Because I rarely give up on some things. So I know for some of them, we'll meet Ukombele somewhere and they will have to explain. Mm. Okay. Now let me answer your question to the guy who wants to make money online. The first thing is make your account stand up for something. Okay. Um, the other day I was looking at one of the most watched videos on YouTube. It's actually how to boil water. Hmm? Yeah. <laughs> it's how to boil water. So, uh, and, and it has many variations. How to boil water for cooking tea, how to boil water for bathing, how to boil water using... Uh, boil magic. Pot. Boil magic. It's, boop, a very, boop, 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 boop. it's a very serious issue right. uh, on YouTube. Just go look at the views, you'll be shocked. Mm -hmm. One of those video videos, I think, has a billion views. How to boil water. So, um, have content. We have too much unexplored content. Some people are sitting somewhere, they don't know how to grow a macadamia tree. They don't know how you plant maize for it to become corn. So, how you plant, uh, you know, how you, you, you know, how you do, how you pick tea. Go for authentic standout content don't all dance i mean dancing is good but don't all, go dance when you're doing something it gives you the content and it gives you a niche that then becomes easy for people to follow up mm -hmm. then number two monetize from the beginning okay. don't wait for it to go so i mean and monetization is two ways from the platform by being paid and from sponsorships mm -hmm. approach people for sponsorships and you can do then finally work with government Government has already said 10% is going to digital content. It's to people who are doing content creation. Mm -hmm. So look at what government is doing. Either criticize or support. Either way, you will benefit from government advertising. Mm -hmm. So I think for now, the best advice is grow content within your space. Right. So if you're a student, tell us how it is to be in a class of aerodynamics, how it is to be in a class of something. That way then, we are able to you are able continuously to make money from the online mm -hmm. platforms. All right, well, Asante Sana, uh, Dennis Itumbi, definitely a lot more to talk about in this digital and creative space. We'll definitely invite you uh, back here again. And I appear to turn on the road soon, so I can invite you to come up and down. But thank you so much for making time for us and, uh, and for, for giving and for talking <laughs> as well. Thank you so Sana. Thank you so Dennis Itumbi! Wow, wow, wow. Well, remember the hashtag to use is Wabebe XP. That is W A B E B E X P. Asante Sunday, we're going to be back right after this. Wabebe! Wabebe!